So you might have heard about the impending propane shortage this winter. And well, if you're an RVer like we are, you know that's not the best of news as we all tend to use things like propane for heating, cooking, and hot water. So in this video, we are gonna go over how to cook completely propane free, which we've actually been doing for quite a while, plus give you some tips on how to save on those propane bills this winter. We are Charity, Ben, Dakota, and Trinity. We decided we didn't want to wait for a life of adventure. So in 2017, we bought our first RV and set off to live a life of travel in the USA. We've visited over 38 states in three years and have many more to go. Follow along to learn all the best places to see, RV and travel tips, and much more. So when we first started RVing four years ago, we actually cooked in our RV pretty minimally. We were really more in vacation mode, which meant we were eating out a ton. And of course, with eating out a ton with a family of four that came with pretty large grocery and restaurant bills. And so we knew fairly quickly that that had to change and we needed to get out of that vacation mode and go more into everyday living mode, which is exactly what we did. And I went back to my old ways of meal planning and just trying to be strategic in how we were going to do this RV life thing without eating out all of the time. So that brought me to the need of learning how to cook in the RV and to be able to prepare meals that we all would enjoy with what tools that I had in the RV. So as we started cooking in the RV more with the propane stove that it came equipped with, we figured out it was a little problematic, especially in the summertime and with warmer weather because you had the heat that was coming off from the propane stove and from the flames with the propane in competition with the air conditioner. So it's trying to cool things off. This is heating things up. I of course have to open the roof vent to be able to vent any potential propane fumes and the air conditioner's running. And it's like all of these things are in conflict with one another. And so we just realized that this whole cooking with the propane stove in the RV wasn't really working working well. So we started looking for better options for cooking. So the next thing that I did was I got like an electric griddle. Well, that also put out a ton of heat. And then anytime that I would cook something that was high smoking like bacon, then the smoke alarm's always going off too. So that wasn't the best solution either. So just recently, Fogati sent us this induction cooktop. Now I'm loving this on multiple levels because number one, this eliminates having to use any sort of propane at all. It's 100% electric. Number two, I had never used an induction top before. In fact, I didn't even really understand the whole concept of induction cooking and what that meant. But basically, all that you need to know is that this thing doesn't put off heat like any traditional electric hot plate or stove top does. You do have to use induction compatible cookware, super easy to find. In fact, we'll have links below in the description for all of this information. And of course, we will always have this over on our blog as well, which there'll be a link below for more in-depth information over on our blog. But needless to say, having this induction cooktop has completely <laughs> eliminated the need for any propane from the propane stove. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use this induction cooktop. I'm also gonna show you another tool that I use for cooking, not this, but another one, to be able to just use electricity for cooking. And we're gonna talk about some go-to meals that we do for our RV that are quick and easy and it can all be cooked without propane. And so right now when we are filming this, it is about lunchtime. And so I am hungry. My cameraman Ben behind the camera is hungry. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna get started with making one of our go-to lunches for RV living. Okay. So let's get out So one thing that I love for RV living is anything that's collapsible. So for this particular meal, I need a bowl to be able to scramble up some eggs. So I like these ones that are collapsible. Of course, I'll put a link in the description below. Collapsible stuff is all of my go-to stuff when it comes to RV kitchen. So need one of these. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and we can set the temp here. Yeah. 
hot fast. It gets very hot fast, which is awesome. It's another thing I love about this whole induction setup. So for this particular meal, we're making scramble bowls, which is one of our go-tos because it's quick, it's easy, it's really high protein, and it's something we can do for breakfast, we can do it for lunch, uh, we can really put anything we want in there. And of course, you know, anything in a bowl is better, right? So start by letting this turkey bacon fry for a few minutes and uh, then we'll come back with our next ingredient. So why this is cooking for a few minutes, I'm gonna just tell you a little bit about our RV kitchen setup. So I have recently downsized our RV kitchen setup. It is crazy when <laughs> you talk about RV living and you think about, oh, I downsized my house into my RV. Well, let me tell you, even after that, you still feel like you're constantly downsizing even in the RV. Because we just recently got this induction cooktop. It only has two burners. I downsized where I have two pans because why do you need more than two pans if you only have two burners, right? And very rarely, you're not gonna cook a whole Thanksgiving meal in your RV, right? I don't need to be cooking for an army. I don't need huge amounts of pots and pans because let's just face it, I'm not having 20 people over. We can't fit 20 people in here. So this particular pot I like because this acts as like a fry pan, saute pan, everything. And it has short handles versus a long handle. And what that means is it's way easier to store. I'm not trying to take up this much space to store something with like an eight inch handle but with these small handles, it can fit pretty much anywhere I need it to fit. The other pot that I have is just basically like a saucepan pot, right? So use it to boil water or, you know, cook something that you would cook in like more of a saucepan. And that's it. That's all I have for pots. I just need the two that I have. So the other thing is, is because we do have a home base, what I do is our RV is basically equipped with duplicates of anything that we might need or other things that are more RV size. So for instance, an Instant Pot. Now in our home base, I have a larger Instant Pot because I have a little bit more space. For the RV, I got a different Instant Pot that's a smaller Instant Pot. Works great for just our family of four, but it's also a smaller footprint, so it's easier to store away. Same with a blender. So the blender that we have here in the RV is more of a personal size blender. It's not a huge blender, so it's very easy to store away because it has that smaller footprint and for a family of four, works just perfect for the amount of space that we would need when we make smoothies or things like that. talk about what this particular dish is comprised of. Now, I love anything in a bowl because you can really make it whatever you want. But so for our scramble bowls, what I do is I do like eggs. I've got some turkey bacon, cheese. We're going to top it with avocado. You could top it with tomato, anything that you really want to top it with. But eggs are a good base. They're very inexpensive. So we're always looking on ways to cut down the grocery bill. So this is kind of our go-to breakfast. It can be our go-to lunch. Just kind of depends what we feel like eating. But I particularly like this for lunch because it's a nice, good protein base and we're not gonna feel drugged down the rest of the day. So let's get this together so we can eat.
so one tip that I learned very early on was to use paper products. And now this is super, super important if you're doing any sort of boondocking or if you are in any sort of campground where you have limited hookups. So for instance, we've stayed at a lot of campgrounds where we've just had electric only, no water, no sewer, and you don't want to have to take that extra water to try to wash dishes. So a lot of times we like to use paper products. They're completely compostable. We also like to get the compostable disposable silverware to be able to use when we're boondocking or in a non full hookup type of campground. So I use a lot of paper products. In addition to I have the other stuff on hand when we need it. So one thing that I really like to do with RV kitchen stuff is to make sure that I have very small footprint items. So like this cutting board is super small, fits in the cabinet nicely. So I like to use just what I call RV size things, which are really the same type of item that we would use in a sticks and bricks house, just on a smaller scale, since RV storage is always limited. So if you think about that, when you're shopping for kitchen things or uh, those types of tools, always think about, can you get that same tool, but on a smaller scale? So a few things that we talked about a little bit earlier in this video are things like the Instant Pot and our personal size blender. I wanted to talk a little bit about how that we cook some of our go-to meals using these types of tools. So I'm gonna snag these out. Now, one thing I love about this booth dinette that we put in when we did our RV renovation, and if you don't know about our RV renovation or you're newer to the channel and you didn't get a chance to see the whole renovation series, I'll put a link up above for that. But this particular dinette from Rec Pro has the best storage in the dinette benches out of any dinette. And so this is where I actually store Instant Pot and I store our blender. So they're down here. So this is the Instant Pot that I use here in the RV. This is the smaller version of your larger instant pots but a couple of things that i started doing with this that i didn't even know that you could do is that this has a saute mode so you can hit the saute button yeah it's a button i don't know why i was questioning myself is it called the button what is it called <laughs> it was just a really wow. weird moment in my brain i don't know <laughs> what it's like to be in my brain scary okay so you just hit the saute button and you can actually do things like ground beef, ground turkey. You can basically use this as almost like a fry pan. So I started doing one of our favorite go-to meals, which is a taco bowl. So basically instead of creating tacos and putting them in a shell, like you typically would, you just take some crushed chips and put them in the bottom of a bowl and then layer all of your ingredients and eat it with a fork. I actually got this idea from one of our insiders that said their favorite camping meal was something called walking tacos. And so people do the same thing where they take a bag of like personal sized Doritos, but then just add all of the taco ingredients there and you just eat it out of the bag with a fork. So we put a little spin on it, call the taco bowl and just do it in a paper bowl. So another thing that I like to use this for is if I need to make any sort of like spaghetti sauce or marinara sauce, I can brown all of my ground beef in here, just add the marinara sauce, put the lid on, keep it on warm while I'm cooking up the pasta. Now with pasta, I can do that two ways. So I can obviously do it on the induction top now, but before we got the induction top and I didn't wanna use any of the propane, I could actually just boil the noodles in the microwave. So that's another option that you can do too, to cook without any propane propane at all. So speaking of the microwave, so our microwave is a microwave convection oven combo. So 
another thing that we do and we have done is we can get some like frozen pizzas or like a take and bake pizza and we can cook it right in here. So now that we have this induction top, one of the things that is on our to-do list for this fall while we're at our home base for a little while longer is to actually pull this propane stove out and then put this induction top in in more of a semi-permanent fashion than it is right now where it's more portable and just get rid of the oven altogether. So we will be 100% propaneless when it comes to cooking. We've already been not using it for a while anyway, so we just wanna free up that space for more storage because say it with me, you always need more storage. <laughs> when you are RVing. So make sure that you're subscribed because we will be documenting all of that in a video coming soon at some point. So Instant Pot, induction top, convection, microwave combo. Between these things, there is no more need for propane for any sort of our cooking whatsoever. It can all be done with electricity through these things. The other thing that I love an Instant Pot for is this replaces what you might would traditionally use a crock pot for as well because it does have a slow cook option. So things like your chilies or your soups or things like that that you would maybe wanna cook in a traditional crock pot, you can cook in the Instant Pot. Doesn't put quite as much heat off as your traditional crock pot does where you go to touch it and it feels super, super hot. It can put off a little bit in slow cook mode, but not as much as your traditional crock pot would. So a quick note on meal planning. So if you have heard the saying, failing to plan is planning to fail, that absolutely 100% of the time happens when it comes to meals in an RV. If you don't have a plan, you will find yourself eating out way more than what your budget probably wants you to be eating out. So I do like to plan for our meals. Now here's the thing, being in an RV, limited on storage, limited on cover space. Our fridge is, is huge, but still we don't wanna pack it too tight. So I like to plan for one week in advance. So I take a look at our week, figure out what we're gonna be doing. Are we going to be away from the RV a lot where we need more things like meals on the go that we're gonna to need to pack in the cooler and take with us? Or are we going to be having a work day where we're at the campground and I can use all of my stuff for cooking our meals? So I plan all of that out, grocery shop accordingly, and then just try to also eat through anything we have. So when I go to put that meal plan together, I'm trying to look at do we have things on hand like rice or pasta or what things do we already have on hand that we need to eat through first so that I'm not bringing extra groceries into the RV and then trying to find a place to put them all because I overbought or I just didn't have a good plan in place for our meals. So some of the meals that we take with us for going out adventuring are things like what I would call an adult lunchable. So meats, cheeses, crackers, fruit, things of that nature. Those are great for meals on the go. Those are also great travel day meals as well. So those days that we're having a travel day, we like to eat the, those things while we're on the way. And then when we get to the campground, we like to do something simple like maybe pop in a pizza or something like that in the convection oven or just put together a quick like pasta dish, something that's really quick and easy because after a long day of traveling, I'm sure you can let me know in the comments below. Last thing you wanna do is cook a big gigantic meal. So that makes that part easy there as well. So we'll have links in the description below for all of the things that we use, but also Cookware 360, which is the cookware that I am using, actually gave us a 20% discount that we're able to give to you guys. And so if you head over to our partners page, so gratefulglamper.com forward slash partners, or just on the main website, you'll see a tab that says partners. These are businesses that we have talked to to get discounts for all of you guys. And Cookware 360 is right on there, so you can snag your discount and then pick up some induction compatible cookware from them. One thing I love about it, it is American made, stainless steel, super easy for cleanup. And it's not super heavy like some of the cast iron stuff. So lighter weight when you've got a travel trailer, an RV that you're concerned about weight for. So make sure you check that out. Again, I'll have all of this information over in our blog post for you on our website as well. 
links below for all of that. So I had to pop in here real fast to let you guys know as we were working on just putting this video together, we realized that we forgot to answer the question about the Blackstone. So we have decided for now we are going to ditch the Blackstone with the propane shortage and everything coming up. We have just decided it's easier to cook inside the RV to not have to lug the Blackstone around. So yes, we are ditching our large Blackstone for now. We may at some point get a smaller one to carry around with us, but we're just really enjoying the convenience of the induction top and being able to cook in our pajamas if we want to inside of the RV. So we just wanted to give you that quick update because we realized we hadn't answered that question yet. So there you go and back to the video. So I hope you found this video super informative. You're gonna have to let me know below, what are your go-to meals for RV life? I'm always wanting to look at what other people are doing. I've gotten great ideas from our insiders. Speaking of which, if you're not a Grateful Glamper insider, we'll have a link below for that as well. We've got some super fun stuff coming up for our insiders. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you're in the know. I'm gonna put links for a couple videos that I think you might like here and here. And then you can check out our insiders group here. And then you can check out our website and everything we've got going on at the blog over here. Until next time, if we don't see you at the campground or out there on the road, we'll definitely see you in the next video.